We're here in the studio of Montreal painter Dill Hildebrand. Hello, Dill. Hi. <laughs> Hello. <Darian. laughs> and uh, so, I guess Dill, uh, we're sort of doing a studio visit here. I came down to Montreal, and we're, we're here just before the uh, opening of the exhibition. Um, people will be able to see the two paintings. I think it's Studio D and Studio E, yeah. and they're just they're they're paintings. Uh, of your studio and one of them, yeah, when I walked in I noticed the stairs, I noticed the loft. That, did you build the loft? I something? did, yeah. yeah. So this uh, loft space and you created a loft within it and, uh, and also um, this easel and I think actually in one of the paintings you can yeah. actually see uh, your storage. So it's sort of a painting that describes your process of painting. Um, what, what can you tell me about the studio? I mean, why, why pick the studio? As a, I guess in, in the history of art, it's a subject, no? Yeah, it certainly is. I mean, I wasn't really um, trying to nod to that so mm -hmm. much as it, it had a different purpose for me. I, I had been doing um, paintings that had landscape in them. There was, I sort of came from a landscape painting background, and so I was doing that for a number of years, and I think I just came to a point where I wanted to just get rid of it. Okay. I felt like it was just something that I was sort of leaning on because it was comfortable, and uh, maybe I just got tired of it, and I just wanted, I mean, the thing is, I wanted to get rid of it, but I had to replace it with something, and mm -hmm. so, I, um, at the time, I was still very interested in using uh, photography in my paintings, and so it kind of it seemed natural to me to move towards architecture. And uh, you know, the most obvious choice for me to you know to, to make that transition was just to use the, the, the shots at the studio because it was where I was, you know. So and, and also, I had a sort of a, a reference to the paintings themselves because the because the paintings are made here. For me, it, it, uh, the studio represents possibility, and so anything. And so, in that respect, I think of the, in those paintings, Studio D and Studio E, the, the, one of the, the connections I make with the studio is that it it's kind of represents white space, because you know, it, it, it's the beginning, it's where something is going to happen, but you don't know what. The paintings that are in Builders, and this painting here is from the <laughs> same series, uh, in a sense, the photograph that I rendered into it is sort of in the background, very much right. like a backdrop. If you go to a theater production, or even if you go to a set, um, you know, for a movie or a TV show, oftentimes they'll have a backdrop hanging behind. Right. And in, for me, the photograph functions in the same kind of way. I mean, it's rendered in this kind of blur so that optically it sits back there. Mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, and then, you know, these sort of florid colors that, uh, that sort of streak down. Uh, on the surface, I mean, it's all, of course, on the surface, but yeah, I mean, yeah. optically, it sits uh, further uh, forward, uh, all those colors, and that, for me, I mean, is kind of like, very much like drapery. talking about photography because you reference photography a lot uh, in your case we're only talking about painting you might yeah. base your work on a photograph but uh, what we're seeing is purely a painting so I wonder if you could talk about process a little bit because for yeah. some people I think this looks like uh, there's some kind of scan or transfer of yeah. uh, a photo going on yeah and so no there, there isn't any of that it's all uh, it's all paint on there so I mean what I would do in this case is I take an image and then uh, just trace it out by hand and, and start painting it I mean the, 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 the real thing is to match the colors that I see here and so there's a lot of trial and error and, and it's uh, and it's just a matter of working through the problem of matching the, the colors and outside of that it's also there's also a matter of um, uh, blurring the edges of everything. So I mean, I you know I have these fan brushes and, and uh, you know it's just a laborious process of making sure that there aren't any hard lines anywhere. And uh, in this way, you know, with the blurs sort of fuzzing everything away, then then ultimately the image sits in the back. You know, you know, as you might imagine, if you were to uh, you know stare at something this close and everything in the background. You know, it's funny though because you you know if you're staring at your hand and everything in the background is fuzzy, it's not the same kind of fuzziness that you get in a photograph, you know, where the depth of field has this focused and everything is, that's a, it's a very photographic kind of blur there. Yeah. Uh, whereas, you know, when you're, when you're actually sort of experiencing that, that kind of depth of field with your own eyes, it's not really quite the same. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of why I meet, constantly make reference to the photograph, because this isn't a, a natural kind of blur. It's, a, it's very right. much tied to the technology of okay. photography. Studio D and Studio E, as you've explained, are about the studio as a place of, of potential, and uh, we see that in your work, and I think you're offering a lot for, for those that will come to see it. So thank you very much for thank your you. time today and letting us into, uh, yeah, into your workspace. Thanks.